I think when we go into the draft like this, we're going to see a game already of mind where we're trying to make sure we get onto the fold with the best lineup. You said best Celeste EU. It has been banned away against Voldemar. Lyra, no surprise there, I guess, gentlemen. No, not at all. I mean, Lyra is a must pick, must ban for this tournament. One of the strongest heroes available, and Kestrel absolutely follows suit. Zeke smiling because uh, he's created this monster, <laughs> and this monster is Kestrel. And we expect to see her at pretty much 100% either in the pick or ban phase, right? So Kestrel is incredibly powerful. However, it does look like Snow Avalanche does have something in mind to play against it. Samuel will be able to throw those pokes out at range, and having that lance on Bastion can be incredibly potent. And look at this, they've taken the Catherine. Now, when we spoke to Infamous Legion, they said, we don't think many other people are interested in playing Catherine here. How are you guys feeling like she shapes up in terms of the, the meta right now? Well, she's one of the priorities for Infamous Legion. So they are one of the teams that put the most time into her, and specifically because of the meta. We see lots of Celeste, lots of Kestrel. However, she's not against any of those. So it's going to really depend on whether or not she can stand in front of the Samuel damage, be able to block the Malice and Verdict, and the Saw coming Whoa. in. Okay. So, Game one, Saw comes onto wow. the fold, into the sky, Catherine and Kestrel. We just talked about Voldemar having one of the best Saws that we've seen in Europe, and he locks it in for this first game of the World Championships. What an insane lock-in. There we have it, guys. Very quickly, based on the draft phase, who do you think? I definitely like the idea of the Kestrel, Sky, Catherine together going into Saw. Saw's so risky. If Avalanche doesn't pull off a nice first three to five minutes of the game, they're going to be struggling from behind. I'm actually very much looking forward to seeing how well Avalanche can do with this, match, this lineup because it is incredibly strong and can take down the Infamous Legion. So we're going to say Infamous Legion and Snow Avalanche. Great. We've got two wonderful people to take you through here. It's Sona and Jingyi. Thank you very much, guys, on the analyst desk. I am Sona. This is Jin Yi joining me for the first game of the World Championships here in the TCL Theatre. This is going to be an epic. We already have a sore lock-in for Team Snow. I don't think anyone saw that coming, quite truthfully. And it's going to be such an exciting matchup between the two, two teams. That it is. We are on to the Halcyon Fold, guys. It's Infamous Legion versus Snow Avalanche for the first game of the day. Yes, and I think this is the first time these two teams have ever faced up. And it's going to be such an interesting mix of these two playstyles coming in from this. Typically are very, very aggressive in the lane, especially um, with Deft Q there on that Kestrel. Speaking of aggression, we already see Bashing getting taken out. Quarter Boys and Spaghetti doing a great job of just invading the enemy jungle. Yeah, they are. So I think Kestrel's going to have a really tough time here against that Saw, who has picked up the Weapon Blade first. So that's a lot of damage output coming out, and we see the Catherine coming out. Here comes Quarter Voice once again. Voldemar is very low on HP, down to 60, almost gets sniped out. Will get taken down by Quarter Voice. Infamous Legion 2-0 up already. Yeah, that's a dominant star, and that's a really good going, again, especially with that Saw. This is kind of what Snow needed to have this Saw, because I think if you look at their early games, Infamous Legion is stronger, and they needed that saw damage, but the thing is, they need to be able to carry it through, and right now we're not seeing that, as they've already lost two people. It is a weakness that we've seen from Snow Avalanche across the split. They, if they fall behind, they can just get snowballed on, especially Voldemar, who is known for continually pushing up the lane and losing those kills quite a lot of the time. Absolutely, that's what kind of worries me. If you look at any of Snow Avalanche's previous matches, Voldemar is the one that tends to lose his positioning very early on, gets a few deaths, and especially when you've got an aggressive laner such as Deft Q, that's going to be very, very difficult for Voldemar to try and fight against that. And we see Bastion just coming up into the lane to try and help Voldemar push this up. There's a Samuel in the bush as well. Kentisic there. Roots does come down onto Catherine, but at the moment you have to feel Snow Avalanche can't be taking these trades. They're behind. Spaghetti already has triple crystal bit on that sky. Yeah, what we need to be seeing is Snow Avalanche, all three of them trying to push down that turret. But right now, they are trying, but they're not getting too much damage down on the turret, which is not what they need. They need to push that down within the first five minutes. That's always what you've talked about with saw compositions as well. They've got strong poke with the Samuel, so they do have the ability, if they just stick in the lane for a while, to force that Kestrel and Catherine back. Because of the Lyra ban, you don't have that extra healing. You will see that sound. Damage onto the Lance, off towards the side. The Samuel's low as well. There's the Kestrel trying to trade into him. Another kill, first kill for Snow Avalanche. They start to turn this one around. Yes, they do. And the thing is, right now we're still not seeing any damage. There's lots of trade-offs going around. But we what we have to worry about with that saw there, as we get into the later game, Infamous Legion, they have a lot of lockdown. 
kill in the lane as well. We do just see the saw going down. Quarterbus is putting some aggression on here. Actually, the saw was there. Sorry, just there. I couldn't quite see him on the screen for some reason. <laughs> Infamous Legion have taken quite a strong advantage in the early game. If you're Snow Avalanche, how do you get back into this now? Well, we want to see some rule tasting as a three. Right now, we're not seeing that. Finally, we are seeing... Health bars are back, guys. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Cheer for health bars. Yeah, absolutely. What we're not seeing is we're not applying enough pressure in the lane they've been trying, and I think maybe a minion candy or oh, hang on. Ken and is just going to get sniped with a glimmer shop. Infinite Legion, 5-1 up, and Bashan and Voldemar just left in the lurch as Kentisic falls. The thing is with Snow Avalanche's composition is that they rely so much on getting the early game advantage. Right now we're not seeing that. Infamous Legion are head and kills, they're head and gold. And that turret has hardly been touched. We need to be seeing those minion candies coming out. We need to see, start seeing the damage coming out. But right now I feel like they're a little bit too tentative. Yeah, it feels it's one of the pitfalls we've seen from Snow Avalanche as well. Sometimes they just don't make that aggressive play they need to do. When we were talking to them yesterday, they were saying they were yeah. using all of the autumn awesome split just to try and experiment and work out exactly what worked for them as a team. It doesn't feel like from the start of this game they found what works. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think what kind of concerns me is that although they have not had the best splits so far, is that they always have done so well on a live stage. And maybe this is going to be one of those times where they are going to start playing really, really well. But Infamous Legion, nobody's really seen them playing on an international stage before. That is definitely true. They have been consistently the winners of that Tesseract Cup, though. They are a strong, strong team from Southeast Asia. So I don't think you can underestimate them. In my opinion, they're probably one of the, the best three or four teams here. Snow haven't had the ability to perhaps practice quite as much because they've only been matched up with some of the European teams who a lot of people are saying are slightly weaker this split. Now, Voldemar takes a couple of glimmers, will get away with the roadie run, but forced back once again. Looks like he's going to try and get his Sorrow Blade now, so we'll have a bit of a damage spike on that sword. Yeah, he's got that sort of blade. It's going to be a lot of damage. But however, I think the biggest problem from him is going to be Quasar Boss on that Catherine. And he used to be Farm Swift, you know, previously in the test rack. And he's a very, very aggressive roamer, very in your face, is not afraid of picking up that Storm Crown early just to get that extra damage in. And it's that Catherine, if he gets that Pauldrons early, he can apply those, apply it onto Saw and slow down his attack speed. That is one of the vital things you need to do into a Saw. And Catherine does it so well because she can just use that Merciless Pursuit to get right on to that carry in the back line. Voldemar will be working on his positioning especially. And speaking of positioning, I want to just bring attention to Infamous Legion and their builds. You see hardly any defense from any from Death Q or from Spaghetti already because they know that positioning is the best defense. Yeah, well, we, well, we actually see Snow Avalanche getting some damage down to the turret, picking up the minion candies. And what we're going to be, oh, that's a great route there. Yeah, but, but goes in invisible. Active camo is just too no, strong. That's the thing. We've seen, we've been seeing lots of impales coming up from Bastion that are landing, but there's no follow up from the rest of his team. Saw there and Kentisic, they have a lot of damage. They're not capitalizing on it. And if we did, they might be picking up more kills. But right now, it's just one. I feel part of the reason they're not capitalizing is look at the CS numbers on the junglers. Spaghetti's sitting on 48. Kentisic has 21. He is at half the CS of his opponent, which means he's had to go Frostburn first. He's working more as a poke for his team than anything else. And he actually picked up six Halcyon potions there, knowing he's going to take a lot of pain. Voldemar is the front line. He's dead once again. Infamous Legion spring the track and take down Voldemar. That's the thing about this weapon saw. Actually, hang on, Kentisic, never mind. Um, that's the thing about that weapon saw is his lack of mobility. And if he's rooted in place, fully spun up, it's so easy for Infamous Legion to focus on him. And that's what they've been doing. Currently, he is 0, 3, and 0. And this is what I was saying before, is that he does get focused on very early on. And his positioning is not as strong as some of the other laners here today. If you're Infamous Legion here, what is your next step? Do you just continue to deny jungle? Do you just say, eventually Snow Avalanche are going to have to try and push up that turret so we can fight them in the 3v3? Well, the thing is, I think they should be playing for the late game. They've got a later game composition, especially with that Catherine there. As long as she, if she builds up those Captain of the Guard stacks, she's going to be very, very difficult to take down. And if they play for the later game, we're going to start seeing Saw falling off, especially because he's not getting the chance to be fed right now in terms of CS or gold. Definitely been denied quite a lot. Once again, a good route onto Death Q. Here's Kentisic as well, but not doing a huge amount with the Malice and Verdict Frostburn build, not giving him that damage spike he would like. Voldemar already runs in. Here's the death from above. He's stunned. There's oh. the kill. There's the one shot, one kill as well. Bashan caught off towards the side. He's going to fall as well. Infamous Legion take two quick kills. And this is where we're going to be, we're going to be seeing the turnaround. And again, it comes down to that saw. The lack of mobility is so easy for them to focus them down. And they're doing that. And this is a fantastic opportunity for Infamous Legion to start turning this around. And we see Spaghetti doing exactly what he said before. He's going to the jungle, denying even more farm away from Kentisic, who's actually there's not much change from what we when we saw him last time. 28, like, 
is so far behind right now. He is a huge amount behind, and because they can't put the farm onto Voldemar as well, they don't have that extra jungle to feed onto the saw, he's going to start falling behind as well. At the moment, he's in an all right spot for being 8-1 down. You know, he's got Sower Blade, he's building up towards what appears to be a Tyrant's Monocle as well, but it's going to take him so, so long to actually get to that second item, especially with Quarter Voice just continually putting the pressure down. Death Q's here, and Voldemar has to roadie run away. Yes, and Voldemort's already lost a little bit of health already, so we have to be kind of worried about... He, they need to start thinking about where Spaghetti's positioning is, vision-wise, or just putting in, in their, side of the, their side of the jungle. Right now, we need to have Voldemort to take his more backline approach, let Bash and get the impale, let Kent stick poke away, and then let Voldemort come in. Right now, they're not doing that. Voldemort's just taking everything right in the face. Just a huge amount of damage from those glimmers, and we did talk to a lot of teams yesterday. One shot, one kill. Well, get the snipe! Holy moly, that was incredible. I did not think that would connect. Bashan was there as a front line as well, but he just sidestepped it and Voldemort was unable to. The pressure from Infamous Legion is absolutely relentless. With situations like that, with that one shot, one kill, we want to be seeing Bashan taking more of an approach where he blocks that, but we're not seeing that. I think that's the second time. Yeah, why Why does he not block that there? It feels a little bit like miscommunication amongst the team. Oh, this Bashan's is terrible gonna move. jump in, he tries to steal a tree and won't be able to get it and will go very low. Blast Tremor used as well. I mean, Bashan got out alive, so it's not the end of the world, but... It, it, was, it was a silly move It to was make. a terrible move. When you are this far behind, you're 9-1, you're 3k behind, and gold. Oh, that stun! stun. Kentisic caught out. Gideon will knock Death Q back, which means Kentisic can get underneath the safety of his turret. But once again, Infamous Legion. This is... Voldemar's just dead! He's just gone! There's nothing he can do! Snow Avalanche are rolling down this hill, and at the end of it, there's a oh, lot of pain. Get Great it. Impale. Oh. Gideon will knock him away from the Malice and Verdict, though, and Death Q will pick up another kill. One shot, one kill. Not going to connect, but 11 kills to one now for the Infamous Legion. The thing is, what we're seeing here is we're seeing all three members of Snow Avalanche coming up, and it's just Death Q and Quasarbar doing this. It's just 2v3, and they are winning every single time. It just comes down to synergy and their mechanics. The first turret of Worlds falls. I'm sure we'll see plenty more of those going down across the weekend. Infamous Legion, of course, this is a best of two, so there's always the possibility that Snow Avalanche, you know, come back in the next game and have a different strategy, maybe banning out the Kestrel. But at the moment, it looks like Infamous Legion are going to be our first victors on the world stage. It definitely looks that way, and I'm kind of wondering, maybe the Crystal Saw would have been much better in terms of the execute and the pure damage coming out from him, because right now that Saw, I think, is the weakest point. He's Six out of 11 kills, deaths from his team. And right now he's not getting the farm he needs. 95 to death Q's 112. And he's just not putting the damage. He needs defense, quite frankly. The thing is you pick that into a Sky and a Kestrel and a Catherine as well. You know you're going to be focused down. There are different picks, different weapon power picks that could have been a little bit more effective. Bash and double root. Kentisic going to see what he can do from the side. This is Snow Avalanche able to hold onto their turret for now, but they are just getting forced back by Infamous Legion. They can't control their jungle, they can't control the gold mine, they can't control the pace of this game at all. The thing is, what we're seeing is Snow Avalanche, they have an early game composition. And if you're looking just at the compositions, Snow Avalanche should have been winning the early game, but they haven't. And I think it just comes down to the synergy and they're just not working together. We've seen Bashan pulling off some great impales, but there's no follow-up from either Waldemar and Kentisic, and if you look at the positioning, they are getting caught out an awful lot. And right now we're seeing Infamous Legion coming into the late game, and this is where they are going to be start getting even more stronger than they are now. But well, they are 5,000 or 6,000 gold ahead now. It's a massive advantage to have to try and overcome. And it feels like Snow Avalanche are just compelled to play off the back foot. But since that early aggression where they got two kills quickly on, Infamous Legion have always been pushing forward and putting duress onto Snow Avalanche. Yeah, they have been. And I, oh, as what it seems like, we, we, we were saying Infamous Legion, they're very well known for playing their glass cannon builds, not getting much defense. And it feels like Snow Avalanche are trying to do the same thing, but it's just not working. Right now, they need to be able to live through the fights. Waldemar, with that Sorrow Blade and with that Tyrant's Monocle, has a lot of damage, but we're not seeing any of it coming out. He's getting focused down so hard, and it's, it's looking like a very tough situation for them right now. Whole of Snow Avalanche are underfarmed and underfed, and Infamous Legion know it, so they're going to start up the gold miner. Kentisic does have a lot of poke with the Malice and Bird if he wants to try and contest it, but it's a three gold miner for Infamous Legion. That just forces them further ahead. Yeah, and it's only 12 minutes into the game right now. Three minutes before the Kraken even comes out, and they're forced back uh, by a good turret already. And they're very pushed up, and right now I don't think this is a good idea. I think they need to get the farm back before starting to push because this is just letting Infamous Legion just rain down the damage. There is an argument. I mean, you've got Oblivion, you've got Impale, 
You've got Mad Cannon as well. They can do a huge amount of work in the team fight if Snow Avalanche are able to get the engage they want. We see Reflex blocks on towards Deathly and Spaghetti. They're going to take the fight once again. Kentisic takes a forward barrage to the face. Glimmer's not quite connecting as much as Death Q would like, but with Voldemort not there, they weren't able to put the damage back in response. Oh, gosh! Voldemort's just dead once again, gets melted off the map. Absolutely vaporized. Th that's the thing, he's just, the Glimmer shots are just hanging. That turret is going down so fast right now. What we need to see is Snow Avalanche picking up some defense. Here comes Death Q, oh, Glimmer, no. Kentisic stunned. It's going to be an ace. Snow Avalanche get destroyed. That's the first ace of the game right now, and I think this leaves Infamous Legion in a very good position to take back another turret, forcing Snow Avalanche down to their very last two turrets, I believe. They're, they're playing a composition that should push turrets early, and they have been pushed in time and time and time again. This will be the third turret falling, and Infamous Legion just take an indomitable lead here. 10,000 gold ahead, only 14 minutes in. There's not much Snow Avalanche can do. What we need to be seeing them do is using that Oblivion to catch all three members out. And we're not, I think we've only seen the Oblivion once yep. so far. He's definitely had it up more than that. We want to see the Bastion using his Impales. And I think, again, it comes down to the point, point is they're not following up. If we just see Saw spinning up in the background and then joining in the fight, having Bastion standing there in the front line, maybe we'll be seeing the fights going a different direction. But right now, positioning-wise from Snow Avalanche is still very weak. Let's have a quick look across the items here. So Death Q, he's got his Sower Blade, he's got his Breaking Point, he's got his Tyrant's Monocle, he's almost got a second as well. Quarterface sitting on a Storm Crown of his own, so he's a threat. And Voldemort is so far behind, they're gonna look for the engage again. Oblivion comes down, does connect, Quarterface is low off towards the side. Voldemort's still alive in this fight, and perhaps no Avalanche can turn it around. The Fountain comes out already, we see Kentisic falling though. Bashan takes the one shot, one kill for his teammate, but he will fall in just a second, tries to roll away. They're focusing Voldemort instead. Bastion, the last bastion of hope here for Snow Avalanche, needs to get away from this, otherwise it's going to be the oh. ace. Infamous Legion are 17 and 1 up. What a game from Infamous Legion so far. And that, the start of that fight was actually going really well for Snow Avalanche in that we were seeing Waldemar spinning up in the background and they weren't actually focusing on him straight away, which is a great opportunity for them. But then they did start focusing on him. We saw, oh, the two turrets are down. This is just the game. They're gonna take those crystal turrets down. They're gonna focus down the crystal itself. Kentisic and Voldemar cannot do anything to stop this. And Infamous Legion take the first game on the world stage. What an incredibly fast paced game and I think this is kind of what we're expecting from Infamous Legion. They're known for their aggression. They're known for the strategy. And we've, we've said a lot that they've put a lot of thought into it. And I think from the very start, it wasn't about that they outdrafted Snow. I think it's just, they just got outplayed. Snow Avalanche, they had this great composition that could have done really well in the early game. We just didn't see get the opportunity to see it. They just got decimated. Their only, only thing they got, the only objective they got in that entire game was one kill. They didn't get a turret. They got one minion mine, we'll give them that. They didn't get a gold mine. Snow Avalanche... They got a kill. Yeah, they got one kill. One that kill. was it. One, that was it. Snow Avalanche looked much more like the team we saw in Autumn Split than the team we saw in Summer Split there. Well, we've, we've got to hold out. There is another game in yep. this best of two, so maybe we'll be seeing them playing off a different draft. Well, they are on the blue side as well, so they have the opportunity to switch things up. That's it from us for now. We're going to hand it back across towards Excoundrel and the Analyst Desk to break down game one. Thank you very much, Stansoda. Yeah, finally, uh, you can get heard on the world stage. That was an insane game, gentlemen. That was uh, Infamous Legion really showing us what they can achieve when given the draft phase that they want. Now, Snow Avalanche coming into this said we can beat them in the draft phase. And immediately after that, Fuji, you said, I don't, I don't think they did. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, right now what we're basically seeing is a draft phase that I think the priority picks that went over to uh, Legion was definitely the kind of the icing on top of the cake. But the real thing was just like, Avalanche didn't know how to play the saw comp where they thought they could just pick something to pressure the lane. But then all of a sudden, with Saw constantly getting killed, Samuel has to go up to lane to keep them from being able to push in return. So we all of a sudden see like, Spaghetti hyper levels, he's 10 at 9 minutes into the game. He's 11 at 9 minutes and 35 seconds into the game. You cannot, like, he doesn't even need to build defense. What's like, we joked about it, but you literally don't. Your defense is just in your natural level progression, so. Absolutely, and Zeke can, I mean, I remember you saying, Saw, that magic minute is five. You're not taking structures with this sort of heavy siege kind of turret taking composition that you were supposed to have pushing that wave early. You think Saw probably lost it within those first five minutes and it was kind of clamoring, just clinging on to life as the game progressed? Right, I believe that's actually what Fuji said. The five minute mark is really key for Saw if he has not taken down that first turret. If he has not gotten any sort of advantage early in the game, 
he basically has no way to come back into it because Weapon Saw, while very effective at pushing down turrets, if you are behind and you cannot fight your opponents, and they just, especially against a Kestrel and a Sky who just completely outrange you, you have no way to actually end the game. Absolutely. We've got a little replay from that game, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a quick look at what's going on here. I think this is that final sort of siege coming through to end the game, I believe, as you can see that turret's already gone down. What's going on here, Fuji? I mean, in this replay, we kind of see Avalanche have a little bit of a spark of life. They do get quite a bit of damage off, but with the Fountain coming out of Catherine right here and the quick pickup on Samuel in the back line, there really isn't anything they can do. I mean, the journey boots on Catherine allow her to close the gap on the Saul as often as she needs to, to get the stun. And at this point, it's just Kestrel for the cleanup. And at this point, it's basically, you, you, your Kestrel's just doing so, so much damage. You've got this hyper-leveled Sky who can just decimate. And I'm, I want to pick up on something that I found really interesting, which you mentioned just there. It was that build path on the Catherine. Um, Infamous Legion talked about it. They don't like to build too much defense, especially against sort of mages and, and that kind of like. And they went down the Storm Crown and the Atlas Pauldrons. Now, obviously, we know where they, where they went down Atlas Pauldrons, that was for the Saw. But Storm Crown adding in there, apart from any other defense he can, what's, what's going on with that? Honestly, in this game, it didn't really matter what they picked up because <laughs> they were so far ahead at that point. They had, what, a five, 6,000 gold lead? It didn't really matter. They just wanted more damage. They could take out the carries of Snow even quicker. Yeah. And if those carries are dead, I mean, who needs defense? And I remember actually speaking to them and they're saying, we value cooldown reduction on Catherine more highly than any form of defense, mainly from her Storm Shield, because that, that, that shield that you get, which reflects that damage, if you have your defenses too high, you can't proc it as easily. And and they were sort of basically saying, we prefer the cooldown reduction just to recycle our abilities over and over again. So what a game. What a game, ladies and gentlemen. Infamous Legion looking fantastic. What can Snow do now? Their Team A, I believe, as Draft does switch over. What can Snow do? Are, they, are we seeing them pick up a really sort of high priority meta pick on this next draft phase? I don't actually know if it matters what they pick unless they refocus mentally. Like, we, I kind of felt like the team lost their way. I mean, and at this level, at the world stage, you can't do that. So Flicker and Lyra band here. Now, interestingly enough, they are going to lock in Kestrel straight away. I don't think it's any surprises there, gentlemen. Uh, but Flicker is an interesting one for me. Snow Avalanche, the only team I think that were kind of saying pick or ban Flicker this entire um, sort of tournament. Right, yeah. this is actually very dangerous for the side of Snow Avalanche because Infinite Legion has picked up that Catherine and Pedal, who are both incredibly, incredibly good against wow. that Kestrel. We've also got the Gwen locked in here, so I mean, that's something that we haven't seen too much competitively. What are we expecting here, Fuji? So very likely, because we see the Kestrel and Samuel, Gwen Crystal Power is incredibly strong at actually dealing with poke comps because her A is so long range. She's able to cover a wide area gamut, and she's able to push teams back. Pedal is just there to kind of help kind of poke and keep that pressure Very on. quickly, who are you going for? Infamous, Infamous Legion. I think Infamous Legion's got this. All right, wonderful. Going to hand over to our two beautiful casters. It's Sona and Jingyi. Thank you very much, Excoundrel. I only see one beautiful caster here. It is, of course, Xinyi. I am more on the handsome side, I do believe. But we are going to get into game two of Worlds here. It's Infamous Legion versus Team Snow once again. Team Snow did not have the performance they would have wanted in that game one. Absolutely not. That 17-1 and 15-minute game was a very, very telling story right there. That it was. But this time, we actually see Infamous Legion doing something we see no other team do and switching those roles around. Quarterbytes is gone. For that laner, we see Deku m m moving over to the Roma roll. And already, they're in oh, the lane. Voldemar has no way of escaping. Infamous Legion, 1-0 up. And it's, it's almost a minute into the game. It's absolutely insane. Quarter he does get impaled right there. But the thing is, what we're seeing right now is Voldemar, he was very, very far forward right there. And I think it was very easy for him to get caught out. That it was. Like That's the thing with Voldemar, though. He's known for pushing up. Uh, we don't tend to see these three-man lanes as much in Europe as you do in SEA and NA and, and in East Asia. So perhaps he wasn't expecting it. But if you've done your research on Infamous Legion, you know they like that early three-man lane. Actually, it's not even about that. If you watch any game from Waldemar and the Evil League, this is what happens typically very early on, is that he is very far forward, he gets caught out. And it's something that he needs to be very, very careful of because it was something we saw in the last game and it's something we've seen a lot. Uh, with this Crystal Gwen, potentially, it looks like this weapon, we're not very sure yet, but they did say that there potentially was gonna be a Crystal Gwen in yeah. the works. We have talked to them previously, and they said they do like that Crystal Gwen pick, as you say. However, we don't tend to see many double Crystal Power compositions anymore. We don't tend to see many double Weapon Power compositions anymore. A lot of people want to mix up those damage sources, so it makes it harder for the enemy to build defense into you. 
Infamous Legion is one of the teams I've seen who are still playing double CP, and it wouldn't surprise me if they did go with the Crystal Gwen, because her range is very, very short. She's one of the squishiest heroes, if you look at her base health, compared to the other ranged ones. And against this Kestro, who's Range is much longer than a Gwen. I think it just works a little bit better. Oh, Bash Bashan! Bashan's going to get taken out as well. Spaghetti jumped in. Bashan just falls once again. They, they just don't expect there to be three members in the lane. Infamous Legion are just so coordinated in their movements. We're seeing Spaghetti rotating up at the right moments. They're picking up the kills, and then he's going back down. We're seeing no pressure coming out into the jungle from either of the teams. And I think this is something that Snow Avalanche normally excel at, is applying that jungle pressure. And that's one of their strengths, and it's a bit disappointing that we're not seeing it so far. Definitely. I, I think there's always a, a worry when you do have a lot of pressure in your lane, when the enemy team is trying to coerce you up there, bringing three members time and time again, that you feel you have to make the reactive play and try and defend your lane. If Voldemar played a little bit safer, use that active camo a little bit better, they could try and put some pressure into the jungle and just have Voldemar play safe. Absolutely, just have kept, uh, the Voldemar just a little bit back into start, have a scout trap under the bush so he knows if there's going to be any ganks, and have Bashan and Kentisek apply some pressure in the jungle because with the Lance and the Samuel there, you have so much potential. But right now, they're just giving the, they're giving the momentum to Infamous Legion. They're allowing Infamous Legion to dictate the pace of the fight. And you can see how defensive they're playing there as well. Bashan had a really good opportunity to land the Impale, but Kensick just looked for the bush. Now they're gonna get a lot of damage down onto Death Q, who has stepped forward. Malice and Verdict coming out from Kentisic. They're looking for the kill, not quite able to get it as Quarterboy steps ahead of his aroma. Snow Avalanche do win out that fight though. They've got so much poke from this Samuel as well. Death Q needs to be incredibly cautious as to how he plays behind his turret. Death Q is very, very low. Hang on, they might pick up the kill into Waldemar here. Yeah, stepping forward, the Munion's doing a lot of work, but here's the drifting dark. Kentisic trying to turn this one around, just needs one more oh, shot, kill. and he will get it. Team Snow Avalanche starting to get rolling. They are, and they've managed to take down Quartabois. He is looking like he's going to be going for that crystal, and I think that was just purely coming out from Kentisic was the poke damage. I think it was all about Kentisic there. And if they can do that a little bit more, again in the jungle, which I would much prefer, then this fight could, this whole game could be Snow Avalanche. It's so important to realize as well, it doesn't matter if you lose the first game 17 and one and win the second game 17 and one. Like, it doesn't matter as long as you've won one and you've lost one for Snow Avalanche here. They will still have that tiebreaker possibility and they still get a one and one record. Bashan's gonna knock Death Cube back here, just get stunned up with a Merciless Pursuit, but not gonna be able to chase this one out too much. I believe this is the first time we've seen Snow Avalanche actually take a gold lead against Infamous Legion. Well, we're only about two minutes in right now, so you can't see that. I want to point out, quite a lot, he's gone up for the journey boots very, very early on, and Gwen is already one of the fastest. Fashion's low, oh, Munions, Munions dead. get the kill. Petal OP, boys. Triple crystal bit, <laughs> Eclipse Prism in a heavy prison. That's all you need, guys. It doesn't need CP. boots, no boots. Who needs boots, man? It's, yeah. a, it's a plant, plants you, don't have you've boots. You've got trampoline, you've got trampoline. Yeah. That's all you need, is you, that you can't wear shoes on the trampoline, otherwise you're getting dirty, so. <laughs> That Petal is just leaping her way in and then leaves the scene to try and do uh -oh. some counter jungling. Uh -oh. Now, Kentisic has spotted him out. We'll be looking to try and take these away. There's Bashan just around the corner as well. Drifting Dark comes out. Spaghetti hits six. Impale onto the Munions. Kentisic not quite able to connect with these Malice and Verdicts, but Spaghetti now low, low on energy as well. And Voldemar comes in to snipe away the kill. Get the Kestrel fed. That's what Snow Avalanche want to do. That was, I think, a bit of a misplay coming in from Spaghetti. I get what he was doing with trying to unveil and deny them some of the farm, but. Without any boots and without a backup there and with no vision of where Snow Avalanche is, that was not a good idea. And I think that was quite a good opportunity for Infamous Legion to push the lane a little bit. This is big. Oh, Kenzie's oh. going to catch him out. There's the Githian wall. Knocks him back, drifting oh. dark forward. Deku stuns up Bashan. That's not who you want. He will run away but won't be able to escape. Kenzie sec secures himself his second kill. They're going to get the turret. Turret's going to go down as well. This is a quicker pushing comp than the saw composition they had in the last game. Turret at six minutes. Snow Avalanche showing us the Avalanche we saw at Summer Live Championships. This is a complete turnaround from the last game so far. I don't know if we're going to see a steal coming up from Spaghetti right now, potentially, but I doubt it. It's a very difficult steal to make, even with Gwen there as well. It is double crystal power, as you said, Jinyi. How do you think that's going to work into this sort of later game? You're going to see a lot of shield built up on Snow Avalanche. Personally, I think for the Gwen and the Petal, I think CP works best. And in the late game, it's going to be very, very difficult for Snow Avalanche to combat with, unless they start investing in that early shield. Right now, nobody's got shield from either Waldemar or Kentisic, and that's a of concern for me, because as we get into the laser game, the CP damage coming from Infamous Legion is going to be too much for Snow Avalanche to deal with.
I wonder as well if Bastion's actually realized this, because he's sitting on a bit of armor in his inventory. Now, armor's okay, but not into double CP most of the time. You want to get as much shield as possible. I'm going to step forward. Spaghetti level 7 has that spontaneous combustion. In fact, everyone apart from Def Q has hit that level 6 mark, so all have their alt abilities available. This is what we want to see for Snow Avalanche. If you're a supporter of them, you will enjoy watching them start to poke down Def Q and Quarter Voice. I like that the, their use of minion candies is allowing them to keep pushing up and we're beginning to see them slowly taking control of the jungle and it's, it's quite a marginal lead that they've got right now in terms of gold, about 1k gold lead. And what we want to be seeing coming out from them is picking up that shield. Right now we still don't have any of that and that's something they desperately need very, very soon. And apply that pressure onto that second tower. Waldemar's doing a very good job so far, but he has to be careful because we are going to see Spaghetti and the Gwen Grand up. A lot of this is about mental fortitude for Snow Avalanche as well. When you lose the first game of World Championship 17-1, and one, it's a big mountain to climb to get back up. But Snow Avalanche have climbed that mountain. They're going down the other side. And they are avalanching towards what might be their first victory here at Worlds. Not quite the avalanche just yet. I'll see a little flurry of snow okay, there. There's, a, there's the a, ripple, a ripple of snow starting to like... Snow doesn't ripple. Depends what type of snow it is. Okay, now snow doesn't ripple, snow that. doesn't ripple, it's true. I have nothing to say to that. Um, right now, what we have to worry about is quite about the Aces high stun. It's going to be doing a lot of damage, and because he's going crystal, it's got an immense CP ratio. I think 240%? 240%. It's absolutely huge. 100% CP ratio as well on the Buckshot Bonanza. So it, the ratios for CP are actually a lot better on Gwen than they are for weapon power. I think it's 75% on Buckshot and 100% on that Aces yes. high. So nowhere near as much damage, but you don't have the consistency of damage as well. It's all about burst on the Gwen rather than prolonged team fights. Yeah, and I think when it comes to the CPU Gwen, she's re re <laughs> relying on her Buckshot a little bit more because of the range and the slow. Because if she's playing weapon, she has to be in very close range to get that damage down onto Snow Avalanche. This way, she can po poke away at long distance, which is what she needs right now. Position-wise, they're doing a very good job, but we want to see Infamous Legion start making plays right now. How do Infamous Legion make a play, though? Because they're pushed back behind that sort of mid of their own jungle. They're not able to get any vision around the gold miner. Snow Avalanche are continuing just to push up their scout trap line and deny any awareness for Infamous Legion. I think for me, it's on how Infamous Legion are going to use our CC. So right now, they have the Silence coming in from Catherine, and they also have that Aces high. If they can catch either Kentisic or Waldemar and then get the Silence on top of them, that's a really great opportunity for them to start using that engagement for a fight. Does Spaghetti need to get himself some boots as well? Absolutely. He, he's sitting on a piercing shard of Frostburn, triple crystal bit, and a couple of Halcyon potions. Um, I assume he'll get the Broken Myth and then maybe get some boots underneath that? I, I guess because his range is so long, he feels like he doesn't need the boots, but in, when it comes to those team fights, he needs to have that escape. The trampoline is there, yes, but they can chase, and there's a lot of potential there with Bastion on that last use his combat rule just to pin him down. Yeah. That is always the risk, you know. You can say, oh, trampoline away from the Impale, but if Bashan can get on top of you, if you've got the Oblivion coming out from the Samuel as well, it's very easy to get locked down. Snow Avalanche are taking a little bit of time trying to work out exactly what their next play is and how they continue to aggress into the infamous Legion jungle because at the moment they haven't really done too much damage to that turret. They're perhaps just waiting on the Broken Myth from Kentisic, perhaps just waiting for Vol mm. Voldemar to get a, a part of another item before they really go all in. Infamous Legion are doing a really good job right now of just holding that turret. And personally, I would like to see Snow Avalanche pushing a little bit more because I think there's been a few minutes since we've seen a proper push. And I think that's just an opportunity that they're wasting because we're seeing, we're seeing Infamous Legion, they're beginning to come into that late game composition right now. And I think they're just waiting for that moment. They're just playing very, very passively. And when they feel like they've hit their stride, now that Catherine has a contraption, she's got the cooldown, this could actually be a really good point for them to start moving. Go disadvantage. There we go. We're back. Uh, and you, like the the question is really for me: Are Snow Avalanche going to have the energy and the mental capacity to continue pushing this in? Because after the first game when they lost so so badly, like seventeen one with a ten thousand, almost fourteen thousand gold differential at the end, is an incredible loss to have to bear. Can Snow Avalanche actually come out of this and say, "Look, we can still win these games. We're still better than this team." Because you have to be confident in yourself to win games at this level? I think they can. They've certainly had a great start. Much better than the last game already. 
But what is slightly worrying for me is that Roam Lance. And I think if you look at Roam Lance and you look at Roam Catherine, the Catherine's going to do better in the long run. Especially when you've got heroes such as Gwen, who's very, very fast. She's got the journey boots. It's going to be very difficult for Bastion to try and land those impels. Right now, his easiest target is Spaghetti, and that's because Spaghetti still has no boots. I want to just focus on Quartervice's build as well. He's gone Shatterglass and Clockwork. So that's an incredibly aggressive Gwen build. Not seeing any defense, we, we kind of expect that from Infamous Legion, but not seeing something like a broken myth, just going, no, like if you go for a full burst build, I'd expect an aftershock as well, but instead just going pure CP. Well, the clockwork is not an item that we see commonly being picked up second. I think it usually is that broken myth. Uh, and I think a broken myth probably would have been a better, better item to pick up second, especially now that Kensick has that Aegis. But look at the damage that is doing on Waldemar with that Buckshot. It does do a huge amount of work. Buckshot oh. takes a quarter of his health. And this is how they're able to continue to force Snow Avalanche back. They've got the ability for a little bit of poke just to make it so that Snow Avalanche cannot continue their aggression. Uh, like you look at Snow Avalanche's composition and you say they're the kings of poke, but when this Gwen has built pure crystal power, she actually puts out just as much damage as a Kestrel or as a Samuel. Impale onto Quarter Vice. Snow Avalanche Ooh. looking for the fight. Not going to be able to land the Oblivion. The Skedaddle gets Quarter Vice out of it. Infamous Legion on the back foot here, but Spaghetti has joined the fray and the spontaneous combustion does work. Voldemar has to back away. Does have the one shot, one kill, will not connect. Snow Avalanche not able to get the fight that they want. They need to fight this. Infamous need to fight this. They force the fountain out of Voldemort. How is this high? is not going to hit right now. We want to see them moving forward in this team fight. Spaghetti trampolines in. They did block out the blast tremor as well. Snow Avalanche able to, after losing out in the early portion of that fight, get themselves back to safety. It looks like they are just going to farm up their jungle. Kraken's on the cards pretty darn soon as well here. So Snow Avalanche may just be waiting out for that Kraken and then look to end the game with a push. That was a gr actually a really good fight for Invisible Legion. Yeah. Um, as we're saying, this double crystal is beginning to come. And right now, Waldemar, I want just I just want to see some shield coming out from him. Oh, there we go. Minion's foot. It's a great shield. Great shield. Legion boat that you don't need you don't need defense because you can just rely on your position. Well, the thing is, when I can understand, maybe he doesn't need that reflex block as early because of the skedaddle. The cooldown is relatively short, 14 seconds, much cooler, sorry, much lower than the cooldown on the reflex block. So, you know, if you can rely on that, it's, it's a very intuitive button to use. But, does have to be careful. Right now, he is very, very long range, relying on his buckshot to stay out of position. And if they can just keep poking away at Waldemar and Kensick, and then Infamous Legion maybe can do the counter push. Well, Kensick has now got Broken Myth and Frostburn, so he's going to have a huge amount of poke damage as well. Double Tyrant's Monocle on Voldemar. He actually used to build a, a very interesting Kestrel build, mm. which was uh, Sorrow Blade, Double Tyrant's Monocle, and then Shatter Glass to finish it out. Doesn't look like he's going down that route this game, but I, I would have been interested to see if he decided to use uh, that one. Uh, Gold, uh, Goldmine's about to leave the Halcyon Fold as well. We will see our first Kraken spawning, so always going to be an option for Snow as they have got strong scout trap vision around there. Yeah, but Deathkey also has his own contraption, so we're beginning to see that those scout traps, they're beginning to be set off by Infamous Legion there, so that's a bit of an advantage that Snow that Avalanche is losing. Oh, of course, he's got Tries to skid that out, blocks the Gethian Wall! And they will be able to get away. Skedaddle, of course, does give you that short period where you can block out CC. However, this is the start of the Kraken for Snow Avalanche. There's always an opportunity for a steal, but it doesn't look like Infamous Legion want to go for it. They just backed away. They still have four turrets for Snow Avalanche to have to push through, so they've got enough of a base to keep it defended. But the Kraken has been unleashed for Snow Avalanche. And I think Infamous Legion, with the range that they have, I think taking down this Kraken won't be too big of a task. And it depends on how Snow Avalanche are going to push with the Kraken. Are they going to be super aggressive? Are they going to poke? And I think what they need to do is be super aggressive, take down Infamous Legion as much as they can. But otherwise, this is going to be an opportunity that will be wasted if they don't do so. How do you go aggressive here? Do you just try and continue to poke and then go for an all-in yeah. engage? They've got so much poke coming out from the from Aldemar and Kentisic that they're just focusing on Defcu, which Whoa, is actually working. Oh, huge amount of damage onto Defcu. He hasn't built any defense for himself. Kraken takes the first turret. Defcu gets a bit of damage back. Kraken down to half HP. Spaghetti and quarter voice still high. There is an impale from Bash and Kendersick's gonna follow it up. Malice and Verdict coming out. Kraken pushing onto the second turret of the push. Oblivion in the back line. Defcu oh. will go down. Snow Avalanche starting to get the ball rolling. They're looking for Spaghetti as well. 
may continue this push. The Kraken has a sliver of HP to try and work with. And I think Snow Avalanche should probably back away at this point because that Kraken is very, very close to going down. They do back away at this point. But right now, Snow Avalanche, they've taken a 4k gold lead or 5k gold lead off the back of that push. And they've got a play in conclusion. They've got a tough, back, tough game ahead of them right now because so far we're not seeing the plays that we were seeing last game. And the mechanics, they've kind of disappeared, I think fizzled away. Part of it is the snowball advantage as well. A lot of these Southeast Asian and East Asian teams, when we talked to them and asked them what their greatest strength was, they said, we are very good at taking a lead and then never giving it up. In this game, they took a lead by two kills and then started to give up a little bit. And then since then, Snow Avalanche haven't given them giving them the opportunity to try and take a lead again. Voldemar's gonna step forward. Death does get the off. Ken six off towards the side. Here comes the fight. Snow Avalanche are looking for this one as Spaghetti goes low. Pushed back by Ken to six. Death is that front line. Snow Avalanche decide they don't quite want this fight yet. Bastion does have war trends if they want to go for the engage. Oblivion doesn't hit. However, Voldemar's gonna hit with this one shot, one kill onto Spaghetti, half HP. Infamous Legion, Ace is high onto Bastion. Voldemar looking for the flank, gets caught out, but here is Kentasic, and he won't quite get the damage down onto Infamous Legion. A huge fight, but neither team lose a man. And I think the lack of boots on Spaghetti is... Oh, oh no, no, I'm a Kentasic! Here comes the stun oh, from no. Deku, impale out. Kentasic survives with the fountain, though, and Snow Avalanche turn it on its head. Well, Waterbot and Spaghetti, they're a little bit healthier, but they're being poked in so low. The Madison Verdict poke is absolutely huge. Voldemar is oh, going to spot out Corner Voice and takes him down. Snow Avalanche, six kills to three up, looking for the ace. Not going to be able to chase down Spaghetti just quite yet. Bashan still trying to get on towards oh. that petal, but spontaneous combustion used. One shot, one kill, does not connect. And Spaghetti will just roll his way back to his base. Painfully slow coming out from Spaghetti. Painfully slow. And especially. Only had boots. If only. You know, Kensick, he's got that frost burn. You've got this like, kind of double slow coming out, out from you. And it's so easy for them to focus him down because in that fight, Spaghetti was just taking a lot of damage very easily from Kentisic because of the lack of mobility coming out from him. Voldemort does have an Aegis now alongside Kentisic. There's extra shielding picked up onto Fashion with that Crucible and the Fountain. He's pretty darn tanky. Kentisic and Voldemar have a bit of shield resistance. The second Kraken's going to come down. It wouldn't be a European team unless the game lasted long enough for you to get two Krakens at least on the Halcyon fold. And now they are going to look for the push. Only two Crystal Turrets remain between them and securing their first game here at Worlds. DefQ does have that Storm Crown, so it might be a little bit easier. But I think last time we saw the Kraken push was that it was very easy for Snow Avalanche to focus on DefQ. And then Spaghetti and... First of all, I just had to take a back line. They had to be a bit more careful with their positioning. So this is a very, very tenuous position that we are in right now. I wonder perhaps if Geku had built a little bit of armor as well. It might mm, help out Infamous Legion a bit more. The Impale onto Quarter Voice, he will skedaddle away. Snow Avalanche won this fight. Oh, Big Mars Tremor though. Ace's high does not connect and Deku gets stunned up as well. Oblivion, three man Impale, two man sleep. Infamous Legion getting sniped away. Voldemort uses the one shot, one kill, doesn't connect. The Kraken's still pushing in though. And Snow Avalanche may have this game in the bag. Kraken at half HP. If they get Ace, perhaps they lose. Oh, they get one, they that? get one! What was that damage? Bashan's gonna get chased away as well. The Kraken should take the Crystal Turret, but can Infamous Legion defend this? I think they take the Kraken down well before it takes their Crystal. And Infamous Legion hold on to hope. Just hanging on by a thread here. They have, they are down to that t Crystal. And Snow Avalanche, they haven't lost a single bit of single turret. And I don't think even any damage has even come off no. from that first turret. So they need to get that vision down. We don't want any of those back doors coming through it. I mean, there's, you've got a kind of potential if they do run straight for it. But it looks like Infamous Legion just try and just go into their jungle. Take away these scout traps, move your vision line up, and this is Infamous Legion saying, look, we, we know we can't just win if we allow you to control the map again. So they push up, they say, we're going to try and take control. We're going to try and set up a bush where we can catch you out. I understand that, but there's absolutely no vision on that lane for Infamous Legion. Like, there's no chance, apart from the minions, the, that's the only way yeah. that Infamous Legion would know if Snow Avalanche is pushing up. Kestrel does have active camo as well, so could just run behind it. Can sit oh, out going. spaghetti. Oh my and gosh! the boys are going for this. Oh, the Infamous damage. Legion pull the trigger. They take down Samuel. Voldemort's the next target. Spaghetti's doing work here, but the turret will defend him. But now oh look at that gosh. shot. 
Quarter Vice is absolutely melting through Voldemar. Bastion, Impale onto Quarter Vice. He's not tanking the turret anymore, though. Death you steps in front of his carry to keep him alive. There's the fountain. Voldemar's looking for the flank. Counter fountain used. Bastion's gonna get chased away here. Voldemar, it's all up to him with this flank. He gets he's he's oh, God. Infamous Legion are holding on to this game, and they take Snow Avalanche by the scruff of the neck. They've had new, completely new life. That turret is going down so fast right now, and that gold. That gold lead is beginning to drop. Now it's only 1k between the two 1K. teams. 1k! That was actually a great tactic coming from Infamous Legion, just going so far ahead that they were able to catch them out. That dive, going to Kensick under the turret, they had enough damage to do so, and they knew that. This is the point as well where not building defense helps you out, because <laughs> they've got so much more damage. At this point, you've got the clockworks. You've got almost, it, it, it's a double piercing shot on quarter voice <laughs> alongside a broken myth, melting through that shield. Infamous Legion, actually, when they played Samuel, we used to see them build double, triple broken myths just for that extra damage. They're gonna go for the yeah, Kraken here. They're going for they're going for the back door. They're going for the back they're door as well. Oh my god. No, 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 they're not. No, 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 okay, okay, that's, 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 that's all you, good. You got too excited, Shinji. You got so too did excited. You. I saw you spit. Oh, oh, oh my gosh! Oh, no, he doesn't! They didn't I thought steal he it. had it. I thought he had it. I saw oh. I saw the elixir, the uh, infusion pop up and I was like, oh he's got it, he's got it, and then he didn't. The crowd cheered as well. They're taunting me, they're baiting me into things. What is this game? What, what is that would this have been game, the Shinyu? Third Kraken. Third, Third Kraken. Kraken. And Infamous Legion aren't even going to push well, you with it. They're just going to give... It's wasted opportunity right now. But the gold doesn't matter. Like, everyone's six items. Death going to push in now. They need a poke. They, they are absolutely looking do. for the poke. Snow Avalanche looking for it in response. Oh, Spaghetti gets great. Bashin low. Bashin has double shield as well. Just not able to tank up this at all. Kraken down to half HP. Death to the front line. <gasps> Look at the damage from the Buckshot. But Waldemar just gets melted away. Infamous Legion. This would be the biggest turnaround I have seen in a long, long time. Down to just their Bane Crystal. And they might be able to close out the game. There is the Oblivion, doesn't connect. The Kraken's still pushing in. Voldemar on Spaghetti. Oh, Step you forward. There's the Blast Tremor as well. The Founder comes out. Ace's Hide does not connect. The Kraken's still there, though. There's spaghetti. the Kraken's Spaghetti. No, 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 no. Watch out, oh. watch out. Not going to connect as Depp blocks it away. 10 to 6 low up towards the side now. Spaghetti going for the chase. No Avalanche only have one Crystal Turret they remaining. To they're gonna try and back away. Voldemar and Bastion oh. are looking for this, though. They're looking for the chase. Quarter boys with a buckshot across the wall. This thing no. needs to back away. Oh, God. What is this? There's one Crystal Turret this remaining chaos. in this game. There's this one chaos. turret remaining in this game. We are 23 minutes in, and this game, if this is the pace that Worlds is gonna be played at, I don't, think my voice, I don't think my voice is gonna last the weekend. What are they doing? Infamous Legion, they are playing so much better when they are the aggressors. For the first, I would say, 18 minutes of the game, their performance was very lackluster, yeah. very weak. But the moment they switched that swi they switched the switch on, it was just a completely different story from them. Just the aggression, they took down four turrets in one single push. Uh, they did. I'm, I'm a little bit interested by itemization choices. Quadivice has got double piercing shard. I, I think he's got enough money to upgrade it into a broken myth as well, and has decided not to. I might, I might be wrong with my calculations. Bastion trying to step up a bush here. Uh -huh. he, he hasn't been spotted by that flare. They know Kentisic and Voldemar are there, but they don't know Bastion is. You can probably guess that he's there, though, but... Yeah, they can now I with that flare. this coming. next fight is make it or break it for both of these teams. And it looks like Snow Avalanche, they're going to be the ones aggressing, and I think that's a really good opportunity for them because whenever... S both of the teams are There's very similar. Yeah, so he just didn't have enough gold. He's got the second broken myth now. Well, maybe going for a third. Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? A Snow Avalanche, you have to feel, perhaps have a slight advantage at this point because they are used to the longer games. Europe is known for its, you know, 25, 30 minute games. Infamous Legion, SEA is known more for 15 to 20 Actually, minute games. interesting point, Infamous Legion, if you looked at their very, very early footage from about a year ago, they were like, all their games are under 15 minutes. Yeah. But recently, we're seeing them shift towards late game, and this could be something that we've not seen very much from the Southeast Asia teams. Spaghetti takes some poke across the wall. Death few steps forward, impale onto him. Infamous Legion are trying to work out where the crack is in Snow Avalanche, but will the crack lead to the Avalanche raining down upon them? Death Q caught out, impale misses. Oh, one spaghetti. shot, one kill onto Spaghetti. The back line is a weak now as Infamous Legion try and find the retreat. Merciless Pursuit will get Death Q out of the oblivion. That's Snow Avalanche. And they turn towards that fourth crack of the game. Quarter Voice knows it's on the cards. And he has that ace is high. He's got his trap card to try and catch out Snow Avalanche. Kraken down low. Uh -oh. Death Q and Quarter Boys step forward. They've stopped the Kraken. That's important. As Death Q does try and get onto Voldemar. He used his Aegis there. 
So we'll be low. Ace is on. On Voldemort. Cordoboy's trying to get the damage down across the wall. Fountain U. Step Q. Caught as well with the Gideon. Voldemort's going to have to try and get back to his oh, teammate. He gets them. He gets them. Voldemort gets melted by the Buckshot. Bastion 2 forced away. Kentasik looks like he'll be the only man surviving the last Bastion of Hope once again for Snow Avalanche. But in fourth Kraken. Infamous Legion with the fourth Kraken of this game. I don't know what Kansas can do. I think there's very, very little because if he tries to seal this Kraken, that's the ace. And if he doesn't, there's not much he can do against this Kraken in this last push. And I think this is going to be the last push off the game. I can sense the Europeans in the crowd trying to imbue Kentasik with their energy. It's like, please, Kentasik, please, Kentasik. Do a 1v3. In Infamous Legion will not give any mercy as they once 20. again push in with the Kraken for the second time in the game. Well, 15 seconds left for Waldemar, but they're just going to focus on Kensick, which is a very good idea. And if Kensick can just keep them at bay long enough... Here comes Spaghetti, Death Q looking for the stun. Do you see the reflex block come out? He just used it. He needs to clear this way, but I just don't think he can do oh, it. Kensick! Look at the damage! That's... It's the ace! Infamous it's not Legion! The ace. Turn it around, they get the ace buff off it. Bashing and Voldemort are back alive. The crystal low, and the crystal will not survive as Infamous Legion take the win and take it 2 and 0. Oh. I can't. That game was absolutely insane because I think it's fair to say from the very, very start of the game, Snow Avalanche were the dominating force in that game. And just when they pushed Infamous Legion down to that very last turret, it was just a complete turnaround. They just changed everything. The, the momentum, it just flipped it on the head. And I think Snow Avalanche just didn't know how to deal with that because they just started being very flummoxed, their positioning. Oh. What a game. It seemed like at 18 minutes, Infamous Legion just said, look, we're going to channel our inner Von C and we're going to see a hero and we're going to kill a hero. No fear, just fight, boys. We're going all in. They are so much better when they're aggressive. The yeah. dives into the tower at the very end when they did catch Kent stick out before he went into the base. That's exactly what they needed. And Infamous Legion, with that performance, they are, they are have a, it looks like they're going to have a very good run ahead of them. Definitely does. Well, <sighs> what a series we had to start us off here at the World Championships. We're going to hand it back across towards the analysts to break that series down. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, what a series to kick off the World Championships with. That was insane. It's crazy. It was a crazy game. <laughs> 1962 was the last time it snowed in LA. Doesn't look like it's snowing again today either. Oh. <laughs> Infamous Legion just whitewashed. And I think that the major talking point, that late game Gwen seems to be a real thing, hey? We talked about it, right? Like CP Gwen into this kind of double poke. but. The biggest thing about this game was Infamous got so far ahead of themselves. CP Gwen is a monster, but she doesn't start out this way, right? Like, so she has to scale there. Like, there's, there's items she needs. I mean, what were some of those core items we saw her finish at the end of the game? I mean, the biggest thing that I've seen out of Infamous is that they build the Shaglass, the Clockwork, the Broken Myth into double piercing shards, in which they turn to two more Broken Myths at the end. And it's so effective at shredding through any sort of shield that you build. And the damage that comes out is absolutely immense, as you saw toward the end of that game. But it took them so long to get there. Snow had a couple opportunities to end that game. They, the, it ended up with Waldemar getting caught out, which basically snowballed into Snow getting killed a couple more times. And that really led to Snow's downfall. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and again, we saw actually this triple Broken Myth type thing coming out from their Samuel as well. Infamous Legion have played that a lot in the Southeast Asia region. And they kind of don't seem to mind about that unique passive or anything. They're just saying, nope. The, the shredding is all that we need and worked wonders there with Gwen, especially with that Buckshot Bonanza. I mean, I was getting up to like almost CP saw level of oh, damage yeah. coming out, you know, like 700, 800 damage. We got a replay to show you guys and maybe this will illustrate some of our points. Yeah, so I mean, right here, this was the do or die moment. We see them have to fight because if Kraken goes over, then it's game over. But we, we see the uh, ultimate come out of Gwen and this damage, six. I mean, you can't get away from that as Kestrel. It doesn't matter if you go invisible, you still get hit by the A ability. I mean, hey, a three second cooldown on a 700 damage ability, <laughs> that seems pretty good, right, Zeke? It's pretty strong, <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta admit, it took them a long time to get there. There yeah, were yeah. many opportunities for Snow 